Thank you. We still have half an hour for our discussion. If you have certain remarks or comments to voice, please go ahead. Who would like to say something? Or perhaps to clarify something from the presenters? I will start then. It is very nice to hear so many interesting papers here. And I want to thank everyone who decided to share the experience with us. And I wanted to evaluate uh, the, what we heard today, that is uh, the third uh, stage, uh, not a very uh, common uh, lung cancer. We do not know what to do with that. We do know what we can do on the first and second uh, stages. Uh, there are voices saying that we have to replace chemotherapy, uh, replace surgery with chemotherapy. I think that not many of us will agree because it is very seldom, only in 20% of cases, we can count on a long-term effect. Because uh, uh, after independent uh, treatment. Uh, lungs develop usually another type of lesion, even more aggressive than previous. We understand that there is a theory of induction uh, emission tomography. We, it will be only uh, too easy to imagine that uh, there is n there are no problems with uh, suturing the uh, the stump of the bronchus. Uh, Professor Putov said when I was defending my doctoral thesis, I don't have any incompetence for 25 years. Why? Because I haven't done any surgery over those 25 years. Those who operate, especially pneumectomy on the right-hand side, however brilliant we might be, uh, however th thorough and trying we may get, we will all the same have that incompetence. So if we want that we are important and we understand that we should discuss the composition, induction, chemoradial therapy at 4 degree, it looks like everything is okay. But here we must uh, we must hear today the opinion of our scientists, because immediately after several days after induction uh, and the motive of cell preservation, uh, if we operate when we had. 60 grade. Everybody showed that with my proposal then would be to discuss it with radiologists and chemotherapists. Might be to find out the value, not 40 grade, but better. 
to find which tissues will give a response to our radiotherapy and include only that group in the uh, result so that we could show uh, its effect differently. Uh, yes, if we decide to start nothing, uh, to, because we do not know what will the patient do, well, who will study? Okay, you are smiling, so please then say something. The chief TB specialist of the... No, I'm now the chief thoracic, thoracic surgeon of the ministry. Uh, I wanted to thank everyone for the papers here. And cancer treatment was always a trigger for surgeons. But there are things which alarm me a little bit and disturb me. In fact, our symposium is a follow-up of the European Forum. It, its title was Surgery Without Rules. Might be it requires a classic, uh, I would say, St. Petersburg approach, I mean, of our school of thoracic surgery. Uh, let us look around us. Uh, nobody today mentioned N2. I don't like the words of Andrei Leonidovich, who said he is skeptical about endoscopy, which is the golden standard in staging. I don't understand uh, what we can offer for our surgical courage other than the life of our patient. Uh, might be oncologists should take the leading position because we now operate whatever we can, wherever we can, who we can, and so on. Might be we should not uh, rely on the individual qualities of individual person, but maybe perhaps we will have uh, too many recommendations of this sort. We have published 12 recommendations on surgery, but no one in oncology because we were prohibited to do so. I am very th thankful to Oleg Valentinovich who cooperates with us a lot. And it looks like we have the same kind of problems. M might be uh, we won't call one another TB specialists or something else. Yes, I do work at the Institute of Phthisiatry and Pulmonology, but let us try to work according to the same rules for everyone. According with your books and articles, I was uh, very much uh, disappointed in my time by the conservative position of many people. But there are no rules yet. I would want you to... I, I would like to thank Peter Leonidovich for his speech. We've been working together for a long time, many years in diagnostic. 
55 years ago, when we started with thoracic surgery, if we had had such presentations at the Cancer Forum, that would have been a shock. Now there are certain rules of the game for cancer treatment. It was said what we can treat or what we can irradiate. So when we hear something like we heard today, irradiation of multiple metastasis is not a surgical method. A lot has changed. Surgical approach has changed. Surgical techniques have changed. New devices have changed. Medic medication, medical uh, treatment of uh, tumors have become more widespread. Targeted medication is also widely spread. So in this context, the ideas uh, that we have are very easily brought to life. I have a proposal to make. Vladimir Lidvich has a brilliant contact with the Moscow. Perhaps we could as a session of our forum, suggest him to be our coordinator of those randomized studies. It will mean also adding additional methods to surgery so that we could work together for these trials, only well-selected patients should be uh, chosen so that we could later on say that this method is effective. Now we have a lot of works, lots of papers on hyperthermia. But Still, all these problems are transitory. At our institute, we started working like that for the first time. Do you remember how much the chemicals for different studies and procedures uh, cost, and they could not be bought from abroad in the Soviet times. Now we can do that. We can develop the procedure and transfer it, Pyotr Kazimirovich, to different hospitals and clinics. Nobody is against working together, but we have to work according to the same standards, determining the morphological structure before and after. Today, we have many other methods, like genetic analysis, like just a chemical analysis, histochemical, and we won't be asking questions like, is this bioactivity or the effect of the treatment? If we properly examine the patient, we'll get an informal group, and that will be an answer to the questions yet unanswered. Like it was said here, I was first pessimistic, but then he started changing to optimism. 
I am sooner pessimist than an optimist. I think that all the presentations were very interesting. But when we perform surgeries with heart and lung machine, they cost quite a lot. If we have biological indicators before the operation, we will be able to say that this intervention is justified. Otherwise, it will be just squandering our money. And it looks like a friend here has already agreed. Well, each surgical maneuver should be well grounded by giving the patient a chance, a light ahead. Today we have BCL2, we have activity of the tumor, we have biological factors in the anamnesis, then it would be logical to offer the patient to apply a risky method. But if we perform neumectomy in the pleural cavity, we should test the patient for biological markers. Then we will have pleurectomy with hyperthermic perfusion. <coughs> and we know those 13 genes that in the year, within the year can lead the patient to the relapse. In Europe and the US it has already been done. But in Europe and America, they work according to a different principle. Each operation costs money. For, I can say the following about medianoscopy. If we do pleurotomy with middle section, we shouldn't open up the tumor. Way open 3D stain in order to treat this tumor. I will agree to the conservative therapy, but if we plan surgical treatment. There is such a thing as mediastinal lymphadenectomy and block resection of tumor. So from the oncological point of view, I believe at stage three and lymph nodes, tumor, I personally do not understand the idea of using this method. Translation is not possible without the mic. Dear colleagues, 
I would like to share my opinion of the conference. First of all, I respect Evgeny Vladimirovich, and we've been friends for a long time. But I think that the discussion should be public. As for Kaltebronk, about 15 years ago, our university organized an international conference on surgical surgery in Holland. And we decided to discuss the efficiency of this Kaltebronk. And I can say that today we don't have such an issue. Now we have new antibiotics, which can help us to work with this Bronx stump. We know how to counteract different problems. We do have cases, but we don't have a problem. We, we can't see a problem here. Secondly, I'm happy that we communicate in such a format that we can share our own experience, not only international best practices, so we can learn from each other. Photodynamic therapy is very interesting for me. We also perform this therapy. We do have some results. They are quite promising, and we can cooperate in this regard. As for your proposal to appoint Evgeny Vladimirovich as a leader of a study, I'm for it, but you have to understand that any study is costly and Evgeny Vladimirovich cannot be the only one responsible for such a large-scale study as we plan to conduct. I would also like to say a few words. I'm so happy that the conference is organized so well. I would like to thank Alexei Stepanovich and Evgeny Vladimirovich for making up such a program. Currently, we are not talking about surgery only. We are talking about the whole scope of work of surgeons so a broad, low-invasive therapy is welcomed. And uh, what about us? We have such a term, evidence-based evidence -based medicine. I don't like this term, actually, very much. I think... Uh, it's not translated from the English correctly, and uh, it doesn't sound well in Russian. If we speak about evidence-based medicine, we will never be able to prove what is better, chemotherapy or surgery. As for lung cancer, we can do nothing with this evidence-based medicine. I was lucky to assist to Evgeny Vladimirovich. I think that I'm quite a good surgeon, but what I saw, uh, uh, it was just brilliant. Evgeny Vladimirovich is a brilliant surgeon. Maybe now I will be able to reach this level. But I can judge but what I have seen. This is the only guide for me. Neither 
studies, no publications can help me to improve. All of us have advantages and disadvantages, strong points and weaknesses. I think if a foreign magazine will not publish my article, it will not be disappointing for me because practical experience is most important. And as a surgeon once, I was head of endoscopic service and chemotherapy department for lung cancer. And during these three, four years, we did a lot. I think that we have to cooperate not on the treatment method, but on organ type. A surgeon has to know when to finish chemotherapy, when to start invasion. We have to reconsider all medical care system. We will have to assess the European experience, maybe to adopt some best practices. I liked today's session a lot. It was so emotional. And I would like to focus on the following issue. As for lung cancer, judging by our experience, we can say that Our economic situation poses a lot of limitations. So, selection of patients will become a burning issue very soon. In Europe, they have already passed this stage. We are lagging behind 12 or 15 years. So, Complications, treatment is really costly and uh, clinics do not want to bear this load and uh, there will be even more limitations set. So staging and selection questions are really acute even today. We have to understand that lung cancer is a very difficult disease to cure and not a single technique is efficient alone. So hypothermia and other new methods have to be experimented with. Further on, we have to accumulate more data. I think they will be used actively in future. As for metastasis in lungs, patients are so various here and uh, we have uh, to take an individual approach, especially if we have multiple metastases in lungs. We have to evaluate a lot of factors. Unfortunately, we cannot judge about survival possibility because uh, histological aspects and localization of tumors, all these factors are so various. So I think that discussion 
can be really fruitful, much more fruitful than official presentations. I believe that today's lively discussion will contribute to a further successful cooperation. We are about to finalize our session. I would like to say a couple of words. OK, if you like to say something, I can give you some minutes. Sorry for interrupting. I would like to offer my point of view. I'm a thoracal surgeon with 35 years of experience. So I would like to share my opinion. I will be very brief. My name is Alexey Vitalievich Nuhrin. I work in the city oncological dispenser in St. Petersburg. As for multiple metastases, my opinion is as follows. I think a lot of you will support me. I will support Pyotr Kazimirovich. Five years survival rate is not, is hardly possible. It's for lymphadenectomy and N2. To operate N2 is crazy. And late results are monstrous. I see these patients from different clinics. N2 is not operable at all. I fully support Pyotr Kazimirovich. We have to be sensible. And as for the stump, unfortunately, we do have this problem, especially after radiation chemotherapy. The percentage is much higher. Maybe now it's not so acute as it was in the 60s, but the situation is aggravated after adenectomy and radiation therapy. We are reducing blood circulation, and a lot of insufficiencies will arise. And you will find a lot of proof to this in the foreign literature. and. Uh, I personally believe that surgical treatment of these patients is senseless. We've performed a lot of surgeries with Pyotr Kazimirovich, a lot of resections of upper vena cava and pulmonary artery. Some patients did live, however, there were complications, thrombosis, percentage was really high. And late results, can be visible now when we have patients with relapses. How many relapses shall we have in a month, in a two? I agree that we have to perform these surgeries, but we should not perform them in 100% of cases. We have to be really selective. I fully support Alexei Viktorovich. We have an upper lobe and the first lymph node. If it's the only one and if it's in sridestinium, Shall we refuse the patient? If it's in a, a lower lobe, then the tumor has gone all the way. And here the situation is different. Let's be really selective. Let's assess cases individually. There is an operable N2 and non-operable N2. In 3D 
With the lymph node and stridostiniums, viral rate is equal to stage 2. What if the upper vena cava is contracted, is compressed? So, do you think that you don't have to operate? But what if we perform bypassing? The patient will live for 18 months. I don't agree that we don't have to operate in this case. I respect your experience. My experience is 55 years, but it doesn't matter, actually. In 1974, I visited the Institute of Jules Bardet in Brussels and met a professor, Van der Goof. He published a work about pen cost. Pen cost always followed radiation therapy, and there were some tangible results. I respect this professor a lot. I don't think that he falsified his results. I'm not operating. I'm not performing surgeries now, but I know patients who died after six months after the operation. Now the same patients can live for five, six years. So we have our realities and we can judge by the facts. We may use our own experience and experience of uh, other institutions. So I'm proposing to combine efforts of uh, all institutions which have vast experience of treatment, this pathology. We will have to implement all the modern methods, and in some time we will get together and decide whether we have to introduce a certain method or not. Currently, all these complicated cases are surgically treated not as an alternative but because we want to prolong life of these poor people. So I don't agree that you can't operate N2. On the day of a medical worker, I was congratulated by Mr. Garachowski. He's a poet and uh, an expert in literature, and uh, 20 years ago, I performed a surgery for him, and he lived for 20 years. So I strongly disagree that you can't operate N2. And I think the majority of people here in the audience will not agree with you, despite your experience, despite the fact that you are a respected surgeon. I know your work, but I strongly disagree that we can't operate until we can judge by facts. We have evidence-based medicine. It exists both in Russia and abroad. and. There are some guidelines for us to decide when to perform surgeries or not. That's why we got together. We have to discuss in which cases we have to perform surgeries and when we should not.
Mr. Parshin made a very good presentation, but he described his experience only. Uh, there are no any, there's no any statistics. In order to make decisions, we have to think carefully. We have to collect the data uh, to rely upon. That's why we got together the leading experts and uh, I am fully with Pyotr Kazimirovich. I agree with what he has said. For many years we have been working together and physiatrists and pulmonologists and oncologists in St. Petersburg are working together and we have to Pay credit for this to Professor Rakov. He is the head of our unit. He knew that a lung cancer is not only a problem of oncologists. This is a multidisciplinary problem and many of you did not attend the session on lung cancer screening. Today we cannot use it widely. It's costly, but if we take a really careful approach to screening, if we select patients with high risk only, we shall exclude desperate cases and uh, preventive care was uh, widely discussed. Yes, indeed, it's important. But I think that today's discussion was a real one, an informal and fruitful discussion. And each of you uh, has your grounds and your experience so I would like to reiterate that it's really important to combine the efforts of oncologists, pulmonologists, physiatrists, and take a unified approach, uh, develop uh, common rules for all of us to be guided by. And uh, this is attributed to pre-operational stage and to surgery itself. And it's really important to obtain morphological proof uh, for all situations. Uh, based on this data, we will be able to decide on the use of certain medicines, new medicines. So if you don't have any more burning issues uh, to voice, I would like to thank all of you for your time and attention. And Pyotr Kazimirovich, I think you will agree with me that our discussion was really lively and informal.